Welcome to Michael Potts Photography, the story behind the photograph. In today's video, I'd like to show you this photograph of the Chateau de la Lande under the stars. The Chateau is located in the centre of France, in the middle of the countryside and has very little light pollution. It's somewhere where I've spent a lot of time gazing up at the heavens. If you are interested in knowing more about the day-to-day -day life of this historic building, have a look at the Chateau Diaries. There's a link in the description below. It is a bed and breakfast, which means you can come and stay here and look at these very stars. The current Chateau was built in the mid 15th century, but we believe people have lived in this area for a long time before that. The oldest part of the castle was built just at the end of, or just after, the Hundred Years' War. During that war, this area had seen some quite fierce fighting. The Black Prince had laid siege to Limoges, and in 1356 had marched an army in the vicinity of this castle, past Chateauroux and towards Isodan. It's hard not to wonder what life was like for the early residents of Chateau de la Lande. Would they have been fortunate enough to have seen one of the pages printed by Gutenberg's printing press? or told stories of Leonardo da Vinci travelling past on his way to Blois. The Chapel of St. Joseph, which you see in the photograph, was built in 1856, and it's about to undergo some extensive renovations. It's incredible to think that through all those hundreds of years, uh, through all that turmoil, that change, all that innovation, people have been standing here on this very spot, looking up at the stars, and being as mesmerised as I am today. The stars and the heavens are almost overwhelming in terms of beauty and scale and vastness. At Le Lund, you can see so many stars, the Milky Way is this thick band of light above you. It is one of the advantages of living on a planet located in one of the outer spiral arms of our spiral galaxy. We have such wonderful views of what we call the Milky Way. They estimate that there's probably somewhere between 100 and 400 billion stars in our galaxy possibly more. And who knows how many planets there are in our system. Our closest star is Alpha Centauri. It's four light years away. In other words, the light that we see from the third brightest star in the night sky left Alpha Centauri in 2019, and we're only seeing that now. The star is actually three stars, but to the naked eye it appears as one. Looking at the night sky is a little bit like looking into a time machine, because we've seen this light that was generated in the past and in some cases, a very long time in the past. The farthest star that we have found so far is called Arendelle, or the Morning Star. To give it its proper name, WHL0137-LS. It's also probably one of the oldest. It was found by researchers using the Hubble telescope. Unfortunately, it's too far away to see with the naked eye. The light from Arendelle that Hubble saw left the star 28 billion years ago. And to put that in context, the Apollo mission to the moon took about three days. That's only 400,000 kilometers away. In space, because the distances are so vast, we talk about a light year. A light year is the distance that light travels in a single year. And according to NASA, that's 9.46 trillion kilometers. So that makes Arundel very, very, very far away. The brightest star we can see is Cirrus. It's also known as the dog star. In ancient Egypt, Cirrus marked the flooding of the Nile. And that's what I find amazing about the night sky is that each one of these stars has a completely different story. That there's so much fascinating information about each one. But when we look at the whole, it just looks like a series of pinpricks on the curtain of the night sky. The edit on this photograph does get fairly complex. It's a little bit technical, so I'll try to go over all of those details as, as simply as possible. For a start, I shot this with a Nikon Z9. I was using a 14 to 24 millimeter lens. The f-stop was 2.8, and the shutter speed was 20 seconds. 20 seconds is probably the slowest shutter speed you can use before you start seeing the stars move. And the direction that you're pointing the camera has a bearing on this, because the stars appear to move faster traveling east to west than they do around the poles. But if you want to have crisp star shots, don't shoot any slower than 20 seconds. I set the ISO to, well, this is where it gets interesting because it's not possible to take a single photograph that captures the lightest and the darkest areas like this. So I actually took five different images using the same setting on the camera, but changing the ISO. I started with a very dark image, 
which has been exposed to capture all the details of the lightest part of the chateau, mainly the terrace. Here, the ISO was set to 32. Then there were three intermediate steps, ISO 320, ISO 1250, and ISO 2500. And all of that covers the different details in the foreground. But then I needed to create an even lighter image to capture the stars. So here I'm using ISO 8000. And you can see in this picture that the stars look great, but the building is completely washed out. I've set the camera on a tripod, so each of these five shots are identical. The first step is to reduce the noise in each image. The noise on ISO 8000 is very high. So I ran Adobe's denoising tool, which transforms the image from this to this. I did that on all five images, and then I took them into Photoshop. Here, I loaded them into a stack. So they're all in the same image, they're just on different layers, with the darkest image being at the bottom, the lightest being at the top. The technique that I've used to merge the images is probably a little bit more sculptural than painterly. Here I'm starting with the lightest layer and removing everything that's washed out. I'm effectively removing or destroying the parts of the images that I don't want to keep anymore. And hopefully something beautiful will merge at the end of it. I start with the top image, the lightest one, and remove everything that's too washed out with the erase tool. If we isolate this one layer, you can see it will end up looking like this. I repeat that process layer by layer until I get down to the darkest image. And then I look at the whole image to see how it's fitting together. And you can see that there's some areas that are too washed out on one layer or too dark on the previous layer. So here I create an intermediate layer by copying the darker image and then lightening it just for that section. I can also make this intermediate layer slightly transparent and that helps to really integrate it with the whole image. Once I'm happy that every part of the image is correctly exposed and that the transition from light to dark in different areas looks completely natural, I can start working on some of the structural elements. So I use the clone stamp tool to remove anything unwanted, such as molehills or weird artifacts that are in the stars. And then I brought it back into Lightroom. One of the issues with using such a wide lens is it does tend to distort around the edges. As you can see, the building looks like it's about to fall over. Lightroom has a transform tool that allows you to adjust the photograph on a vertical or horizontal axis. This allows me to straighten the building and make it look a lot more natural. I then created a series of masks to try and reduce the light haze around the chateau. And there we have the final image of the stars above La Lande. Thank you so much for joining me for this look into star photography above the Chateau de la Lande. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you would like this print or many others, please do head over to my print store. There's a link in the description below. And if you haven't yet, please do like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. Until the next one, goodbye.